Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about some Dauntless. Now, as some of you may know, I recently attended PAX West 2017, and I've got a lot of videos to record for it. One of them is this such video, where I managed to get to talk to a few of the lead developers in different aspects of Dauntless from the show floor. They were very welcoming and very opening to answering the multitude of questions that I had for them. Now, keep in mind the footage you're seeing here is just random footage of me playing. Maybe I'll throw in the closed beta trailer at some point but the focus is really on where is Dauntless going because I don't think it's any secret to anyone at this point that the pressure is on them Monster Hunter Worlds comes out early 2018 and that is going to be a direct competitor to them Monster Hunter has years and years of experience with a triple-a studio and Dauntless is made by 30 to 40 devs that while they've worked on big projects don't have nearly the backing funding or the long-standing experience of making an exact game like this. So I really wanted to prod their, their minds and see what it was they had in the works for the future of Dauntless. So I think almost anyone who's played Dauntless can agree the first thing we want to know about is probably the user interface. Now nah, you want to know about weapons, but we'll get to that later. So the user interface is something that in the Dauntless closed alpha and the current closed beta is not very impressive. It's not intuitive, it's very slow and clunky, and I've got an explanation for that. Most of the UI is currently done by programmers to just be functional. It's not dedicated UI designers that have made the current functioning UI. For that reason, it's not very attractive and it can use with a lot of touch-ups. This comes from the UI lead dev himself. So expect a lot of updates to the existing UI before launch. I'd name specific things, but it's pretty much everything that you could possibly think of. You know, the hunt board, the crafting, everything. Like there's no one part that just needs work. So then I got to talk about combat. I spent a lot of time talking to the combat dev. Now, we currently have four weapons that are available in Dauntless in the closed alpha and the closed beta. That would be the sword, the gun hammer, the axe, and the chain blades. Now, they said that they were happy with certain aspects of those weapons. For example, the axe is incredibly powerful and rewarding once you get used to the different patterns and executing and keeping your stacks. However, they admitted they're far from complete. They're working on things such as aerial combos, more combo options for so you have options in different scenarios, and making different types of the same weapon more attractive for different reasons. You shouldn't only want to take a weapon because it has the absolute highest attack power, and they should more directly represent the behemoth that you actually got that from. This includes especially things like calculations on damage types as well. We know that some weapons of the same type can sometimes have different damage types like piercing and blunt uh, and ice and fire and all of those should really matter more especially if you have two hammers with the same attack power they should be good in different scenarios now i don't think this comes as a surprise to anyone but they are currently working on a fifth weapon now this fifth weapon while they wouldn't give me any exact details on it it will be a semi ranged weapon they kind of don't want to just make an all-out ranged weapon and the quote that i got was you sort of have to earn your range with this new weapon that way you can't just stand back and fire away while the behemoth fights everybody else you're gonna have to get into the nitty-gritty just like everyone else they especially wanted to avoid people trying to do things like camp on cliffs and abuse like high ground low ground or just distance in general to try and make behemoths unable to fight back they mentioned tuning of some different elements of this weapon that are still in the works. You know, uh, aggro generation of the weapon, like perhaps it makes the behemoth want to attack them more because of their increased range or increased threat from range. Or give behemoth special means of fighting back against ranged attackers. You know, a Drask right now pretty much has the breath attack and that's pretty much it. However, they feel, and I agree with this, some of their later behemoths, such as Stormbeak and the ones that follow after that, they're fast, they have lots of projectiles, mechanics that can target anyone and everyone. They're already pretty well equipped to dealing with ranged attackers as well. So we're probably going to see more mechanics along those lines. And on top of that, they openly said that, you know, every new weapon they've made since they started development on Dauntless, they said they've, they've learned a lot. And what they can do, they can do it new, they can do better every weapon that they make. So uh, they think their next weapon's really going to reflect the progress that they've made on developing weapons in the game overall. Now, if we're not talking about weapons, it is a, a boss where you hunt behemoths. So... 
What are they doing with behemoths? Because we have quite a few in the closed alpha and the beta, but it's not nearly enough to satiate everything that you want. And they assured me that they are in the process of developing a lot of new behemoths. A lot of people have seen some of the more basic ones like over and over and over again. You know, you have Shrike, you have Nasher, but those kind of just act like the baseline for some of the things that they do later on. And you start to see that with things like the Pangar, with things like the Stormbeak, with things like Rage Tail. You know, it's not as simple as just hey here's the nasher and then we'll just do stronger nashers you know they do massive variants that have their own unique attack models uh each behemoth kind of belongs to its own genus which is defined by the frame of the enemy model a good example is how like a scrave and a shroud use the shrike's frame but they use that frame and they develop new unique aspects to it i'm going to keep going back to the storm beak but he uses an ember mains frame and has a ton of attacks that you know aren't really relatable to what the ember main itself can actually pull off but you recognize a few of the attacks along the way um that's actually my favorite one so far although shroud is also a big favorite you know and honestly they said they can't wait to develop more awesome behemoths that have more unique abilities that aren't just as much as hey here's a hip check here's a tail attack you know they want more unique aspects to each of the individual behemoths now they I, they spent a lot of time talking to me about the evolution of you know taking the base frame and making a new behemoth out of it with a brand new attack set but they wanted to assure me they are working on a lot of new actual frames that then can have these types of variations. So expect a lot of behemoths and diversity coming in the future. Now, I did get to talk with one of the design devs as well, and they are currently in the works of finishing a lot of the chain blades. This is really the only thing I could ask a lot about because I'm not super... I guess, knowledgeable when it comes to design, you know, going from concept to 3D art. And there's a whole huge process there that I'm not all too familiar with. So as a chain blade user, I just asked, you know, when are we getting more chain blades? Uh, they put out the alpha with most of the chain blade models unfinished, which they said was okay because for the alpha and for the beta, it really is more about testing gameplay, fixing bugs, getting feedback on things that uh, players would, you know, want to see prioritized or things like that. So they're accurately using it to gauge data and the designs are on their way. They're in the works. It's not like they're waiting for players to ask for designs on chain blades, like they're trying to get feedback from the alpha and beta. Uh, they added the Nasher model for the chain blades during the alpha and it looks great. It's got the two giant beaver teeth. Um, and they even said that as Canadian developers that they kind of like the idea of having a giant beaver as a boss and the weapon turned out exactly the way they wanted it to. And finally, I got to ask a little bit about content. Now, this may seem like it's very intertwined with what Behemoth's actually, uh, the Behemoth section we talked about a little bit earlier. Ultimately, that's what you're doing. You're hunting Behemoths to get items to build better armor and weapons to hunt bigger behemoths but they said that they want us to feel like we have objectives to shoot for and they were two very solid examples i was given um on twitter they've been doing these special challenges where they offer rewards uh, you know like defeating an ember main with four players everyone using an axe and doing it in under 10 minutes or defeating a shrike solo without being hit you know they want that kind of challenge or these kind of options inside the game itself so you don't just log in and go well i guess i'll just kill the strongest behemoth because i'm still trying to upgrade my body piece you could go oh wow that's the challenge today oh, i really want to try that or you go you know maybe today's challenge isn't for me you know obviously doing those every day might be a little bit difficult but the general idea is there they need to make sure excuse me that those types of objectives are properly tracked when you're facing off against the behemoths in game the twitter ones currently you have to like submit a video with proof that you actually did it that way uh it's going to be a while but that is one thing they really want integrated into the game are those twitter community challenges and another big thing i had to ask this is just something that i kind of fear personally you know i'm someone who in the alpha and the beta you know i'm i'm towards the end of the behemoths that they have currently released in the game and i'm concerned about the people who are newer to the game not having enough people to do the lower tier behemoths with them you know that's a concern of almost any sort of online game where there's this sort of linear progression and so i asked if there was a, if they were going to do anything to encourage seasoned veterans to go back and participate in the older hunts with younger hunters or newer players and they mentioned adding things like daily and weekly objectives to the hunt board that encourage both intriguing play end game kind of like the twitter challenges and rewarding the better geared hunters adequately for going back and helping the newer players maybe just even reliving some of the nostalgia should be a little bit of a reward oh i remember when i first beat this one but you should be rewarded for going back and you know helping raise a new generation of hunters and that's something that's good because i really feel like as a game with linear progression they really need that 
Now, I would have loved to have asked a million more questions. You know, obviously, I would have loved to dive more into the aerial combos, the regular combos, you know, fixing up some of the hitboxes, uh, you know, asking them what the freeze effect and the shock effects actually do currently in the game or what their intended effects. There's tons of things I would have loved to have asked. Uh, for gathering mode is another one, like the ability to go to gathering. But they, you know... They put out announcements, they put out lots of information in the community, on Reddit, on the forums. You know, they're working on new islands, they're working on the designs for stuff, they're working on tons of new behemoths. There's tons of reassurance, and, you know, all things going well, this isn't just a game where they're going to put it out, it's going to be free to play, and then it'll never get updated. They really want to make sure that when you put the game down and you come back, that there's something new and challenging waiting for you when you return to the world of Dauntless. So, as someone who has, is really diving into the hunting industry or the monster hunting type of industry with these types of games uh, for the first time, at least seriously for the first time. Uh, I'm glad to hear this and I'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out alongside Monster Hunter Worlds because ultimately in a real in a really good galaxy or universe, Dauntless comes out with new behemoths, beat those. Monster Hunter World comes out with a new behemoth, beat that. And then go back and forth and see the evolution and the competition of both games really breed a better environment for people who are fans of this type of game overall. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed some of the answers that you heard. I'll keep you up to date on anything else that I hear Dauntless related. And as we get closer through the closed beta, more of the bugs get fixed. Expect beginner guides, intermediate guides, and advanced guides for the different behemoths and the different weapons as they evolve. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned. We'll have more Dauntless information in the coming months. I will see you in the next one. And until then, take care.